Today is going to be carnage. We have a new cookbook and it's called The Ultimate Cooking Battles Normals Edition. It's themed like a classic comic book and features some of the standout recipes from our best battle videos of all time. And what better way to test our normals progression than to get them to recreate and improve on some of their past catastrophes. And today's battle is... Ultimate Burritos. It's Jamie versus Mike. Now last time, Jamie enraged an entire nation. Plus Mike didn't actually make a burrito at all. So let's see if anything's changed. Now in true past battle style and with a nod to our new cookbook, we've decided to include a little bit of cosplay. So we asked you guys for some fantastic villain ideas in the comic book world and outside of it. And these were your two favorite. I am Maleficent off of Sleeping Beauty. I actually feel pretty good. <laughs> and Jay, who have you come as? <laughs> I am Ursula from The Little Mermaid, and I also feel fantastic. Look at this. Don't be tapping me with your tentacles. I'll give you tentacles if you ask nicely. Oh. Well, now you're dressed appropriately. Should we get on with the burrito battle? One hour begins in three, two, one, burrito. Step one, put glasses on, otherwise I can't cook. So the burrito that I'm making today is a sweet take on the burrito. It's got sweet rice pudding, it's got a fruit salsa, kiwi ice cream, wrapped in a tortilla, deep fried. Up until that point, it's a burrito, then it becomes a chimichanga, but it, it was a burrito along the process, which is why I'm able to crowbar it into this challenge. As with all of our cooking challenges this year, there are skills badges up for grabs. Let's take a look at the leaderboard as it stands. Jay, which badge are you aiming for? Well, Ebers, I'm making essentially three separate dishes. Um, so there's a lot of multitasking going on. So I'm going for the multitasking badge. You look like Ursula's friendly grandmother. <laughs> it's like Mrs. Doubtfire, but with a purple face. <laughs> Mike, you're on creativity, turning something sweet into savory and vice versa. Are you feeling confident? I'm feeling pretty confident. I won the battle last time but I also know that you judged us on where we were at as human beings last time, and that I imagine the stakes are a lot higher and our attention to detail has got to be a lot, lot better this time round. So the kiwi ice cream is essentially peeled kiwis and sugar, zhuzhed up in a blender, then added to mascarpone, stirred together, put in the freezer for a couple of hours to freeze up. Easy peasy, cheats, but delicious. This is an odd ice cream in the sense you've got that really creamy mascarpone and you've got the really acidic, tangy kiwi. And when you combine the two, there's a risk that it becomes a bit vomity. Oh, lovely. But actually, it's delicious. And one of my favorite ice creams we've done for a long time. I'm going to take these off because this is a bloody nightmare. Now, last time I did this, <laughs> it led to lots of things that weren't so good. When we first did that battle, I had no idea how the ownership that the Valencians have over Paella and the protection that they wrap around it. And I didn't set out to offend anybody. I wanted to create a delicious, beautiful tasting dish. And I did. But was it officially a Paella? I think the problem started because you described the Paella before like this. It's going to have a simple, traditional Paella base. A simple, traditional Paella. <laughs> <laughs> they were your words. That was the equivalent of Jamie just tap dancing into the way of an oncoming train. However, today, we're just going to frame it up differently because is the recipe changing? No. But am I making a paella? Oh, I'm using a paella pan. I'm cooking a Spanish-inspired rice dish within there. Then very, very separately, I'm going to make poached chicken and chorizo in red wine. And then at some point, maybe towards the end of the battle, there might be a tortilla that I might put a line of my Spanish-inspired rice down the middle of, and I might put some of my chicken, and if some of the chorizo accidentally falls into that, then oh, so be it. With some salsa, wrap it all up. It's a beautiful burrito. How's that for uh, caveated? So basically, what he's saying is, I'll do the exact same thing again. It's going to annoy just as many people, but I know that I'm doing it. <laughs> to start, I'm going to peel and finely dice an onion, peel and mince a clove of garlic, roughly chop a tomato, then add that into a paella pan, a paella, 
with olive oil over a high heat. Get, get that cooking down, turn it down to medium, leave that for 10 minutes stirring. In the meantime, I can steep some saffron and I can chop my chorizo. Given all of your comments from before, we have completely acknowledged that if these guys demonstrate the badge that they're trying to go for, then they should be awarded the badge, regardless of when they win the battle. So James is judging the dish. I'm awarding the badges. Last time, this thing goes straight in. Yes. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Always learning. Growth. Every burrito has rice in it. I'm going for sweetened rice. So I'm using a pudding rice. It's going into sugar and coconut milk, along with 400 mils of water. Uh, I'm going to bring that up to a boil and then let it simmer for about 20 minutes before chilling it so that it's nice and spreadable when I come to actually construct the burrito before it turns into a chimichanga. With my chorizo sliced, it's going into a separate pan because remember, it's a separate dish. I will then let that fry <laughs> for a few minutes to release some oils from the chorizo. We'll then add in red wine and our chicken breast, which will gently poach. In the meantime, I'll add in the rice to my onion, garlic and tomato mix. That will then be followed by smoked paprika and white wine. Let that bubble away for a few minutes, reduce by half, and we'll come back to it then. Oh, what rice am I using? I'm glad you asked. I'm using Caraspara rice from Murcia, which is about a two and a half hour drive from Valencia. So these are cheats macaroons. They're essentially ratio of one to one condensed milk and desiccated coconut. Um, they're gonna go into the oven, crisp up for about 15 minutes and then go inside my burrito to give a little bit of texture um, because it's a bit mushy at the moment. Excuse me, buddy boy. I've added my saffron and my stock into my paella. I've given it one mix just to make sure it's all coated and then I'm gonna stand back and leave it for 20 minutes. What I want is for all the liquid to be absorbed and on the bottom, I want a saccharat. Okay, I want the crispy, slightly burnt bottom Comment bit below. that adds so much flavour and texture to a proper paella. I really want to try and make this as good as it can be. And then once it's there, we can eat it. Why or don't you make a paella then? We can do whatever we want to do with it. You know, maybe put it into a tortilla with some chicken and chorizo. I, I don't know, I don't speak Spanish. It doesn't have an O in it rather than an A. Ah! What I really want from this is a, wait for it, Socarat, okay? I've put a lid on my chorizo and red wine mixture. I'm gonna wait for that to come up to a temperature where I can start to poach my chicken breast. I don't want it to boil, I want it to poach. My wine went a little bit past simmering point and boiling point, so I'm gonna wait for that to cool down slightly and then we'll crack on. In the meantime, I'll just hold this raw chicken breast here. Boys, you're coming up to half your time. Ooh, cheap. I am happy with that texture. Has a slight bite. You both have 20 minutes remaining. Ooh. So my garlic mayo is two egg yolks, two cloves of garlic, and Dijon mustard into a bowl, and then whisk, 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 as I slowly pour in some oil. I don't actually think my dice was small enough, and I can see bits of garlic in there. So I'm going to carry on getting it to a semi-right point, and then I'm going to mini chopper it, um, just to emulsify it. it You're further. doing that face because you don't want to go and get a mini chopper. It's because I don't want to do all your washing up. <laughs> Can I check my macaroons, please? And they are crisp. They are crisp. They are crisp. Wow, they did crisp. One side of our oven is hotter than the other side of our oven. Now, in the spirit of self-improvement, I already knew that before I put these in, so I should have seen that coming. Would you say it's the oven or the, uh, the size of his balls? I'm glad you spotted that, because the ones that are burnt are the smaller ones. No, not having that. Paella is done. It has to come off the heat and rest. I really want to check to see if it's cooked. <laughs> There's still a bit too much liquid there, so I'm going to leave it for a few more minutes whilst keeping a close eye on it. Sounds like multitasking to me. And I think this is the difference, because several years ago, they would have just followed a recipe verbatim. Now, as is natural, different temperatures of hobs, different size of pans, things will vary. That doesn't vary, that always clicks in the same way. Time to taste my garlic mayo. I know it's gonna need lemon, I know it's gonna need salt and pepper as well, but how much? Let's find out. Okay, so this sweetened salsa consists of perfectly diced to half a centimetre mango and strawberry. I've chucked some mint in there, um, brown sugar, and now I'm going to season to taste with lime juice. 
12 minutes remaining. Let's get on with the salsa. Very, very simple. I'm gonna dice some tomatoes, dice some parsley. You dice parsley? I think you probably finally chop it. Uh, and that's gonna go into a small bowl. I just went to have a little cheeky peek because I had a funny feeling that while Jay was distracted by canoeing the wet bits out of tomatoes, that his chicken might be a bit beyond poaching. It was rapidly boiling. <gasps> rapidly is a strong term, Ebbers. I'm not sure you've ever done anything rapidly. Some things I'm very quick at. He rapidly dishes out sexual innuendos. <laughs> <laughs> Burrito time, gonna construct. Um, got a flour tortilla, adding my rice. Um, I need lots of it because last time, it wasn't full enough to be a burrito before it became a chimichanga. So I'm gonna pack this full of rice, salsa on the top, crumble over my macaroons, then flip the sides in, stab it loads of times with cocktail sticks, deep fry it for a couple of minutes, flip it, out it comes. Serve it with the ice cream, win another battle, collect my badge. Eight minutes remaining. Oh, this, mate, this is so important. I can't watch, I can't look, I can't look. I can't take my eyes off. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I didn't think Mike had time to do a practice one, given what time is left on the clock. Oh, I, but I'm glad he's gone for that. This is my practice one. Ooh. Six minutes remaining. Right, it's just going in. It's going to have to go in. Oh, no, it's open. <laughs> I've got to do another one. Four and a half minutes remaining. Oh, stop spitting at me. Chicken's come out, I'm going to pull that. In the meantime, I'm going to whack the heat right up on my wine, try and reduce that. I don't have long enough left to reduce it as much as I would like to, but get that going, add the chicken back in, turn it back down, let all of that lovely winey sauce coat the chicken on the inside. I'm also seasoning my chicken because I haven't done that yet. <laughs> it's a bit brown, isn't it? Two and a half minutes. Sugar and cinnamon. No time to get a frying pan, so when in doubt, clean the hob and put the tortilla up on there. What you'll notice is layer of rice, layer of chicken, and then nowhere near the rice, I'm putting the chorizo. Oh, not touching. Sticks out so we don't murder James Curry. Oh, he's got to wrap this Will first it roll? time. 40 seconds! And now he's wrapping it in bread. <laughs> Last 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Step away from the burritos. Right, whilst they're nice and fresh, James and I will dig in. First, let's start savoury with Jamie's paella burrito. Are you gonna... What's this? Cheers. Cheers. As a burrito, I know there's been a lot of controversy, but it's a tasty piece of food. The chorizo and chicken are kind of lacking a little bit of punch. All I get is rice and mayo, even though the rice and mayo is delicious. Some very crispy bits of rice, some not quite so crispy. The challenge is that on that hob, it is very difficult. It's a little bit black in places. I think that's taking it a little bit too far, but it tastes great and it's a great base to the burrito. And I'm getting a hit of garlic. Next up, the sweet version with the tropical fruit fried burrito. I'm sure there was lots of chat about this not being a burrito, but it's a burrito at some point and then you fry it. Look, a burrito, I think, has to be a savoury filling. But given that Mike is doing the creative badge of turning something savoury sweet, this exactly delivers to the brief. The question is whether as you eat it, it meets what you're expecting. He was definitely very careful of tasting as he went along this time and adjusting lime, adjusting sweetness and making sure that he was happy with each. Do you know what? I would have liked a bit more macaroon. The best mouthful I've had so far is that chew of the macaroon. It's really nice. And that kiwi ice cream. It's actually really good. It's surprisingly good. Have you got a winner for today? I think I've got a winner. Have you decided on badges? I think so. 
Okay, Jamie, multitasking badge in isolation. You had a handicap of a costume and you were working with the restrictions of a hob that didn't quite fit your pan. But to get all that done in an hour with a lot of overlapping and juggling, I think you did pretty well. Yes, you lost sight of some poaching chicken, but that was about it. So all in all, you can have the badge. Yes! And deservedly so. Get in! A proper juggling. <sighs> Mike, thank goodness we weren't looking at multitasking badge for you, but with creativity of turning something that's typically savoury into sweet, you were tasting as you were going along a lot better than before and you were balancing things out and I think you had much better ratios in the final product and you also take the badge. Yes! Mm -hmm. Transfer of power. Sisters are doing it for themselves. We are. So through my eyes, good job all round. But then James, you got to actually taste the dishes. I don't say but then, because... <laughs> <laughs> well now you have to pick a winner. I'm a nice guy too. And a loser. I thought they both had a few issues. Do I think that's fair? No, that's fair. Ben, <laughs> ben said some things. Oh, of course he did. Mr. Dobber over there. <laughs> but surely the important thing is whether you could taste those problems. That's an excellent segue into a few problems with chorizo and chicken. Maybe not being as punchy as they could have been. Maybe you could have reduced the sauce a bit more. Um, maybe a little bit more seasoning. So I'm giving the win to Mike. Yes! Mike is our battle winner. Oh my goodness! I did not see that coming. He's kept wow. the crown. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was certainly eventful and villainous. Uh, and this is just the first of our mini series of ultimate battles. So tune in every Sunday and find out who the ultimate battle champion will be. <laughs> The book is available to buy right now. Sorted members get a discount. Remember, if you're not, you can become a member for free or you can get our superhero bundle, which includes membership for a whole year, plus the new book, plus our hero veg cookbook, all for a lovely discount. Links are all below. Ow, hey, what the hell are these? <laughs> there might be. A little on the small side, but... <laughs> <laughs>